start kind of playing because it's going to take Toby. Toby's going to take the link once I create it here and he's okay. going to put it on the um, public site. Okay. Uh, so can the public see us? No, ma'am. They can just hear us. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. That's good. <laughs> Okay. Y'all just have to remind me when we go into executive session to stop the live streaming. Stop the YouTube. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Now, Ben Monroe will be the newspaper person here. Okay. I'm not sure why he's doing it instead of Ron Bridgman, but that's just what the email that Mike Buffington sent said. Do you know him? Yes, ma'am. He used to do our meetings years ago. And uh -huh. then, well, he started doing the sports section for years and years. And then he covered our board meetings. And then... He started doing sports, I think, for um, Jefferson, maybe, in the Jackson County schools. And no, so I guess he's just filling in, maybe, for Ron. Okay. I hope Ron's not sick. I do, too. I don't know if it, maybe he's just, I don't know. He's just staying away because of the virus. I don't know. Have any plans been made for uh, the seniors to be able to graduate somehow? What we're talking about doing is, um, of course, you know, the first option is to keep it the same, that same Friday at the end of May, but that's not looking good right now. And so mm -hmm. the backup plan is to um, graduate on Friday, June the make sure I'm telling you correctly, June the 12th on a Friday night would be the backup date. Because we wanted to go ahead and get that date out there just so people would be aware with vacations and summer plans. And, and you know, some of the school systems had talked about even planning something for July or August, but so many of the seniors will already be headed to school. That's right, that's then. right, I guess. That would be hard to do. I feel really badly for the senior, particularly because- Oh, definitely. You know, I mean, your senior years, just that's the mm -hmm. big, great, you know, you do all kinds of things yourself and with your group and- mm -hmm. I'm just, I, but I can't help it. There are a lot of people that are disappointed <laughs> in a lot of things. Right. So, Dr. Sargent, can you hear us? Now he is. He's connecting. Okay. How you doing, Doc? Hey, I think I'm here. You are hey, here. Doc. Hi, Dr. Sergeant. All right. I got Mary and Joy. Very good. And I hear Nathan. How are you doing, sir? Fine, thank you. Fine. How are you? Fine, sir. Oh, hey, you know what? Hey, Dr. Sergeant, it's Knox. I was just going to tell you hello. Uh, hey, how are you, Knox? Doing fine. Hope you are. I'm fine. Good. All right. I am just signing you all in to this meeting. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you. Knox, are you rocking? Am I? Yes, ma'am, I am. <laughs> you look so comfy rocking. I love to rock and swing. 
<laughs> Don't you? I had to come up to the fire station because it would have been impossible for me to do this with uh, three girls at the house. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I got cats wanting to get in my lap, and I'm saying, no, no, get down. Every time I sit down, they want to get in my lap. Don't you? Don't you? Yep, yep. That is sweet. Come here, big boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'll pick you up. Yeah. Come here. You see my baby? Oh, how beautiful. Oh, who's talking? Oh, Miss Pittman, that cat is beautiful. Oh, look at the cats. <laughs> oh, wow. This is Snowflake. Oh, he's got his up there, too. This is Snowflake. Oh, oh how baby. pretty. He's my girl. Oh. <laughs> how old is Snowflake? No, it's 10. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, she's my girl. She's pretty. She's pretty. She, <laughs> she's, she doesn't. She's, she's Bob Tail. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Is she fat? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one the one I held up. Little boy, he's fat too. Aren't you? <laughs> oh me. The only way I had a I told my wife we'd get a cat, I had a declaw her. <laughs> Because they stretch yeah. you to death. Oh, yeah. And they'll ruin the furniture. Oh, yeah. Nate, are you going to do the invocation or will Kyle tonight? I can do it. Okay. All right. Are we going to? Unless Brother Knox want to do it. It doesn't matter to me. We'll let you do it tonight. How about that? Okay. You know, the three wise men were firemen. <laughs> I don't know how wise that is. <laughs> it's in the Bible, they just come from afar. Afar? <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. Oh, dear heaven, Dr. Sergeant, <laughs> you a mess. Has Cal showed up yet? I have not seen him. It's 6 o'clock. Now, I've got 5.57. Oh, 5.57, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. He's got three, yeah, minutes. three minutes. He'll make it. Is the news reporter in here yet? I haven't seen him, but what um, Ben Monroe, he has the um, link to see it on YouTube Live, so he may just be watching us from that. I gave him the Zoom login just in uh -huh. case that didn't work, but I just checked my text from Toby, and he said the YouTube link is working fine. Okay. How did people know that they can uh, listen? Because we put we put it on Facebook, how to get to it, and then uh -huh. it's on the um, system website. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's talk about when will we return the uh, Chromebooks and everything for the kids. You know, we're talking about doing that the last week of school. Uh huh. And so we'll start sending messages out. Just to yes, say, you know, please remember to bring your Chromebook back and and they'll get constant reminders so that they'll know when to bring okay. it back. And okay. we'll probably take them back up kind of the way we dispersed them. So we'll give certain times for the schools so people can just run it by at their convenience. Okay. I may just try to call Kyle, make sure everything's okay. That'd be good. That'd be good. Hey, 
Tony, are you okay? You need any help? You okay? Oh, okay. Oh, that. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Kyle said it slowed him down because he had to get his own water and mints. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Spidey. <laughs> oh my goodness. I meant to get my waters over there. I know. Not with me, it's over there on the table. Will you go get it? Go get it for me. I know, baby. You sweet baby. Yeah, you a sweet baby. Okay, Kyle's about to appear. That's good. <clears throat> good. It's strong, so it's good. And I have a picture of a flag when we go to that screen on the agenda okay. for the pledge. I think we need to stand up. No, we're good we'll, sitting down, I think. We'll, we'll disappear if we stand up. Yeah. yeah, we will disappear. Okay. <laughs> well, there's Kyle. You see him? Good evening. Hey, Kyle. How are y'all? Welcome. Fine. Doing good. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I Kyle. guess we're. Sorry. So we're all here, so we'll call the meeting to order. And the first will be the invocation and pledge, and Knox is going to do that for us tonight. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we'll come to you tonight just uh, thanking you for everything that you do for us, dear Lord. Just uh, be with us during this meeting and just help us to make the right decisions, dear Lord, just for the, for the school system and the community. Dear Lord, just pray for the family that's been affected by this terrible virus that's going around, dear Lord, and just uh, help our leaders of this country and uh, and uh, all the doctors and nurses out there to just uh, put their healing hands on their patients and uh, and heal them, dear Lord, and just uh, forgive us where we fail you and just uh, help us to make the right decisions. Just let me pray. Amen. 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 Uh, is it on there? Okay. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And next we have approval of agenda. I make yes, a motion Nick. tonight's agenda. I'll second. Second. All right. Now, are we going to vote one at a time or just like we always do this time? Um, as long as it's unanimous, I'm good. But if there's okay. if there's a difference in yes and no votes, then we're going to have to do like a roll call vote because I okay. won't be able to know. So if any if anybody doesn't vote for something or whatever, please let us know. Yeah. Okay, so all in favor, we'll just say aye. 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 Okay, any any opposed? Okay, very good. The next part, all right, to the superintendent. Okay, under discussion items, we have two items tonight. The first one is the FY20 midterm adjustment numbers and just like we do every year, we get a midterm allotment sheet. And so this year on the midterm allotment sheet, we had a drop in our number of FTEs. So we knew that number would go down. So overall, the system lost about a little over $50,000, but we're hold harmless. And so we won't actually, they won't take that money away but without the FTE numbers going back up by October, we would receive less funds from the state for the FY21 school year. 
Mm -hmm. So the two areas that did somewhat increase, the charter system adjustment, we received an increase of $1,811. Mm -hmm. And for pupil transportation, we received an additional $7,498 for a total of $9,309 for this year. Um, so that's a very, very small midterm adjustment, but we will not receive less money. It will be the same amount of money with just a small increase of 9309 Have you brought the screen up yet, Ms. Talbert? Sir? Have you brought the screen up yet? Yes. I have. Can you see it? No, I can't. Um, look at... On the top, above the top picture, you should have a screen where you can see. Can everybody else see it? Yeah. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Nathan, can you see it now? I'm trying to get to it. I got it. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm good. Okay, under item B, I have a copy of the purchase order to Fontes and Pinnell. And that is our reading program that we use with primary elementary students. And that is actually a purchase order that will be used from federal funds. And you all approved the Title I budget way back in probably October of 2019. Okay. And so this is an individual expenditure. And because it goes over the policy limit of $10,000, then I need to get the board's approval for it. And this is actually material that we will purchase with this year's Title I funds, but we will also use these materials with the students during the FY21 school year. Any questions about this purchase order? No. No, I don't. Okay. All right, the next item under review of regular board meeting, we will go to Monday night's agenda. So for Monday night, we will once again have the usual parts, call to order, invocation and pledge, public participation, approval of agenda. Under business items, the first item we'll have, I've asked our principals to join us on Monday night just to share an update with all of you. I know I have been informing you as to kind of what's going on with each school and what the kids are doing with online learning, but I thought it would be a good idea for each principal to share with you because they are meeting on a regular basis through Zoom with their faculties so that you can get a better idea about what's going on with each particular school. Under item B, C, and D, you will notice that we have promotion retention criteria for each school. Because remember, a critical piece of that promotion retention criteria has always been the state standardized test. Mm -hmm. And this year, the students aren't taking that test. Mm -hmm. And so what I ask each principal to do is to work with their leadership teams to come up with what they felt like would be the best evaluation of each student to determine whether or not they had met the standards for that particular grade level. So you can look through this you can see the one for primary elementary is on the same sheet and it's broken down by grade level. So you can see kindergarten, first and second grades, and then third and fourth grades with the two main areas being reading and math. And so of course we're going to look at their reading level and we're going to look at their math performance. And I don't think any of these pieces will come as a surprise to parents because when teachers have been meeting with the parents during the student parent conferences, this is all information that the teachers would go over with the parents. 
So the parents are going to be familiar if the teachers have expressed concern already during this school year over the guided reading levels or the iReady diagnostics or their grades or their attendance. So none of that information should come as a complete surprise to parents. Dr. Talbert. Yes, ma'am. What is the MTSS? MTSS is the multi-tiered support system. And basically all that means is that if a child is on the tiers, you might be more familiar with when we called it RTI, the response to intervention. And every child is a tier one student. They receive, every child that's in a classroom receives tier one instruction. But if we see that children need additional support, then that's going to move them up to another tier, tier two, which is going to be everything that every child gets in tier one is just a little bit of additional support. Mm -hmm. And then if a child needs even more one-on-one -on -one support with a teacher, then that's going to bump them up to a tier three support. And then if we see that we're still not able to make progress at tier three, then the child's going to be tested for special ed services, which would put them at tier four, the top tier. Is it the teacher who's doing that intervention with them? Well, yes, ma'am. We do have, of course, the teachers are all doing the tier one instruction. Uh -huh. And then tier two is now still the classroom teacher. And tier three at primary and elementary is Sabrina Hardy because she works one-on-one -on -one with those students. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Talbot, I know the governor basically mandated that this is going to be, you know, pass or fail, basically. Right. And, and is you'll see... Is there any additional guidelines that are coming from, I mean, the the... the state DOE or anybody else is it just going to be completely left up to to systems to decide what their pass and fail standards are the state had given us guidance and pretty much what um middle school and high school used they just took the state guidance and what the state guidance basically said is a no zero policy and they wanted um to make it clear that they wanted any grades that were taken after schools were closed for in-person instruction, those grades should be used only to help students. So mm -hmm. let's say, for example, a student may have had a 70 in a course, and that student wants to go back and make up assignments that maybe they didn't score as well earlier on in the nine weeks, in the third nine weeks, then what the, the teachers are doing now is they're working with individual students to identify what those assignments are and how they can make up that work so that they do have an opportunity to improve their scores. And one of the things when you look, um, middle school has posted theirs, and you can also look at high schools. And when you look at the high school criteria, one of the big things for students to know is that GPA right now is incredibly important because colleges have waived the entrance exam requirement of the ACT and SAT for this year. And so they are focusing heavily on that GPA. And so students who are wanting to qualify for the Zell Miller Scholarship or the Hope Scholarship, I mean, it's like a, it's a gift. You know, if they can just focus on their grades and make sure they're getting that GPA up just as high as they can get it, then that will certainly help them as they try to apply to colleges. So, um, I think our folks did a good job of taking that information and making it because the, the 
information that was sent from the state was good information. It was just a lot of information. And so we knew if we put that out there, it was just going to be very difficult for parents and students and the public to understand. So they put it in a format that would be very simple to the point, but it still is within the guidance of the state. Okay, any questions about the promotion or retention criteria? And the principles, if you have a chance to look at those between now and Monday and you have questions, that would be good um, questions to ask the principals on Monday when they join us. Okay, moving to the next item, March 2020 financial report. For revenues, for revenues, we're a little bit higher than we were a year ago. A year ago, we were right at 79% of the year for the April board meeting. And so um, right now we're at 13 million with projection of 16 million on the budget, which puts us right at 80% of the revenue received. Questions about revenues? Do you no. think we're gonna make it with people not, stores closed and people not having any money? And, uh, yes ma'am, and we're, we're gonna talk about that because I don't, I don't think it's going to affect school systems during the FY20 school year, where we have been told that we're going to notice it is in the FY21 school year. And we're going to look at that in just a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, for expenses, um, obviously, when you're not in school, you're not. We're, we're still spending some money, but we're not spending like we normally would if people were going for professional learning and mm -hmm. we were hiring consultants to come in and we were paying travel for teachers and um, different supplies for kids. So right now, a year ago, we were at 75% expenditures of what was projected on the budget. And right now we're at 72.59%, which it's not a huge difference, but it's definitely lower than what I imagine it would have been if we were still in school right now. Questions about expenditures? On, on the expenditures, Ms. Talbert, did we have to uh, spend more money by feeding the kids while they're out of school? We did, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, that's coming right up, Nathan. Okay. So, to help y'all sort of understand how we're doing that right now. Okay, well, for transportation, uh, did we have to spend any money? Yes, sir, because we're still using the buses. Um, we send out two buses on Tuesdays and Thursdays now with meals. We were doing it five days a week, uh -huh. but this week we started doing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so we're paying for two bus drivers um, to take the meals out. And what we're doing is we've set up the cafeteria ladies and the bus drivers on a rotating schedule uh -huh. so that we're not using the same people over and over and over. Like, for example, the schools with the four schools, they're rotating which cafeteria staff prepares the meals. And then Ms. Wilkie has set up a rotation with the bus drivers to drive to deliver the meals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are we still paying our bus drivers doing this effort? Yes, yes, sir. We have been instructed by the state that you continue to pay all employees. Okay. So everybody is still getting paid. The only people in the system who are not getting paid right now are those contract service people. For example, the retired people that are being paid with federal funds because the federal funds, we cannot continue to pay people if they're not working. We can only use the people who are paid with local funds and state funds. Another question uh, dealing with ABM. So with this pandemic going on, uh -huh. They had not had to come out for any reason, have they? What they're doing is all preventative maintenance. So they're still coming out and changing filters in the classroom. 
um, because when I talked with serv the service for Brad and April Beam had suggested that once they go in and clean all the rooms, that it would be a good idea to go in and clean all air filters. So we're replacing all of the air filters in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing we've done with ABM is we have the controls in the system where Jason Martin can go in on the computer and control all the temperature settings in every classroom throughout the district. And so what he's done is he's been able to maximize the energy savings through ABM because we have increased, of course, the temperatures in all the classrooms. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. You can't make it too hot because then you'll end up with a mold and mildew problem. And True. so they give us a cap that we can cap the temperature out at. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely maximizing those savings right now. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. What was the final cost on the the company that we contracted to come and disinfect the schools? Um, it was just under five thousand dollars, I believe. And what they did, they disinfected all schools, all gymnasiums, the field house, and every route bus that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the last item under the um, financials for March, um, the balance sheet, the net fund equity at the end of March is right at Three million three hundred and sixty-six thousand three eighty-seven thirty-seven. So that's a, that's yeah that's about a little over six hundred thousand more than what we had a year ago. Um, so I, I'm very pleased with that um, fund balance at the end of March. Knowing what's coming, I'm extremely pleased. Okay. All right. The next item on the budget, I had asked Whitney Metzger um, to please put together the beginning pieces that we've been working on with the budget for FY21, because we know it's going to be a very tight budget. Um, I've talked to the principals to let them know that when we are having um, calls with the State Department and receiving updates from the State Department, that they are telling us that the budget year for FY21 is going to be extremely tight. Um, there are some school systems that are neighboring us who have put on hiring freezes for FY21. And we haven't done that. One thing that we are doing, for example, we had um, two teachers at the middle school who will not be returning for next year. And so right now, we are not filling those positions. Um, there was a, we were, we had discussed adding an additional kindergarten position in FY21. And I talked with Miss Lindsay this week and she and I have decided we are not going to be doing that. Um, just in an effort to be very mindful that this budget could be very, very tight for FY21. So looking at personnel, um, what Whitney has done with this, and, and you can kind of look through this between now and Monday, she has put together for the 2021 school year how much we will pay. Now, this is only personnel cost. Um, in every category, instructional categories, and she's put a little description out here, including the counselors all paraprofessionals in the system, pupil services, including the psychologist, and under pupil services, let me find that, just so you know what's included in that amount. Um, that's our speech language pathologist, that's our school psychologist, and athletic director supplement is included in that area. Under pupil services for nurses, that is that includes our two school nurses. Improvement of instructional services, that would be our technology support specialist, 
our special education director, curriculum director, and behavior support specialist salary. Under educational media services, that's all three of our media specialists. Under media paras, that's the para professionals that we have that assist in the media centers. General admin is superintendent. School admin, that's our principals, our assistant principals, our school support, our parent involvement coordinator and translator. Under support services business, that would be finance director, that would be payroll clerk, accounts payable. Under maintenance and operation of plant services, that is our one maintenance salary. And under student transportation services, that would be our transportation director. Um, supplements would be all coaching supplements and any senior supplements that are given for senior advisors, yearbook, um, band, all supplements are included in that amount. So that's your total that you calculate the teacher retirement TRS is our teacher retirement that's paid on that amount. TRS for next year will go down and that is something to be thankful for. Currently it's 21.14% of that base number. Next year for FY21, that amount is going down to 19.06%. So that is the amount that the system will pay, $1.8 million to TRS benefits. FICA is 7.65% of that amount. So it's just over $730,000. Substitutes, that is a guess because we, we never know, um, you know, the number of substitutes that will be needed. Um, we never know the number of long-term substitutes that will be needed. What, the way we arrive at that amount is we have to look at years past and just make our best guess at what that amount will be. And then, of course, we have to pay FICA to those subs. Our bus drivers, we know what they're going to cost for next year and the FICA on that salary. Our board salaries... We know that expense and we know the FICA that will be paid on that expense. For state health, we currently have 169 employees that um, take, that participate in our state health benefit program. We have um, 175 on the budget that will be paid with state health benefit. So $1.9 million will go just for state health benefit for the employees. So Fund 100, the tentative number we have right now is 14278771 That's only salaries and benefits. Now, one thing you will notice for... Um, Certified people, they're paid on a salary schedule. And so we have, if they were due to go up on the salary schedule because of their year's experience or because of their training, then they were bumped up on the salary schedule. For our classified people, we have that amount that you're seeing is showing an increase of 2% right now in this budget. Now, if we're told differently, as we know more about the numbers, that number may have to be frozen, and that means that we would not have increases for those people. Right now, we have it so that everyone is getting a bump in their salary if they were due a bump in their salary. But if we're told that this budget is as bad as we're projected that it will be, then those bumps may have to go away, if that makes sense. Any questions about the personnel amount 
for the budget. Because remember, that's basically 90% of our entire budget you're seeing on this sheet right here. And so the other 10%, Whitney will go over with you next month. And that's basically our budget, personnel, and then the other 10% of the budget. Now, what will probably happen, because remember, we can't operate, or actually we can't, we'll still operate, but we cannot approve a budget until we know for sure what our budget's going to be from the state. And since the General Assembly has halted and they have not approved a definite budget yet, then what we may be doing, the goal was to have our budget approved and ready to go for July 1. But we cannot approve a budget until we know what the number is that we're gonna get from the state. And so we may have to operate with a spending resolution along with every other school system in the state of Georgia if we don't have a budget figure from the state yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Tarver, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. Have, have we evaluated the, the number of parents that bring their kids versus the number of kids that ride on the school buses and see if we can save some money somewhere in there? Um, Me? You know, it, that varies uh, for a lot of reasons. You know, at the beginning of the year, you're obviously going to have more car riders. And then as the year progresses, you have more kids that are riding a school bus. So, um, you know, we probably on any given day, we're going to have just over 200 kids riding school buses. Um, so we're probably definitely going to have more kids that are being picked up in cars than we do on school buses. But um, I mean, I think for those that are riding a bus is a definite benefit for them to be on yeah. a bus. Mm -hmm. Why I said that is because if, if things don't go back to full normal, then we might have to look at cutting back on the buses, I'm thinking a little bit to save ourselves some money if we can. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people are gonna be afraid of what's still out here. Right, um, and, and what will happen as far as um, places we can cut that will make a difference? Like if we, if you think about it, you've got to look at what's going to give you the biggest bang for the buck. Where, where are you spending most of your money? And y'all, the sheet you're looking at right now, that's 90% of our budget. So if you're going to make a difference as far as cutting the budget, you're going to cut people and you're going to cut programs. Yeah. So like if, even if you eliminate a bus driver, we've cut $9,000. That's $9,000. Now, granted, it's $9,000, but in the scheme of things with a 16, $17 million budget, yeah, it's $9,000. Yeah. You know, so where you've got to look, unfortunately, is where the state will look and what they're going to do. Once we know how much we're going to be cut, uh -huh. um, what we're being told is it's probably going to be very similar to the last time we went through a recession. And one of the things that will happen will be that our folks will be furloughed. And so we will have to go back to a reduced calendar. And one of the things that we had talked about is if we know that's coming, it would be great if the state would allow us to do some days this year and some days for FY21. So it's not such a huge hit for our people yeah. in FY21. You know, if, but if they know and they can plan that, oh, wow, I know my budget is probably going to be cut next year, then our folks will know that I need to be very mindful in the way I spend my money between now and next school year. Okay. So really your, your biggest cuts that the system can control is always, it will always be people and programs. 
Okay. I know you were working on what a furlough would buy us from a dollar standpoint. Do you know uh -huh. that number? I don't have that number yet. When Whitney joins us on Monday, that may be a number that she can share with us. I'll make sure we have that ready to go. Those are all good questions. Anything else about that piece? I'm good. The good thing for us, there's a there's a few um, positive things. You know, it's not all gloom and doom. The positive thing is we're better right now going into this than what we were the last time we had to go into this. Yeah. And the reason that is is because we haven't fully remember recovered from the last one. So. True. You know, we still operate on a very, very tight budget with limited people. And I think any of our people would tell you that. So it's not like we have extra people that, oh, you know, we had recovered so well from the last recession that we're going to have a lot of people that we can cut because we don't have extra people. <laughs> Okay, so you may have heard a little bit about the president signing the CARES Act, and it's the stimulus package. And, and y'all re will remember from when we went through this before, we got a stimulus package in the form of something called ARA funds. And so this one, you know, I guess they have to give everything a name, but this one is called the CARES Act. And what CARES stands for is Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. And we have not been given a tremendous amount of guidance yet about this, but I did wanna share with you that the information we received today is that for FY20, our allocation for Commerce City Schools is projected to be $296,232. And what we're told is that those funds can be used through September of 2021. Now, what we are awaiting is approval of those funds and guidance from US Head. So when you <coughs> open the attachment, this is kind of the information we've received so far, is that this CARES Act, the stimulus money can be used for the following reasons. Because they know, because we've had so many kids out of school who have not been having that in-person instruction, that we're going to need funds to address our at-risk student population. We're also going to need funds for distance learning we're going to need funds for school meals. We're going to need funds for any mental health services. Also for supplemental learning going into FY21 for children who have not had in-person instruction for months. And then finally for facilities and equipment. So, so far, as soon as we knew that there was going to be some stimulus money coming at some point, we knew it was terribly important to track our expenses. And the expenses we've had so far include Echovasion came out and completely disinfected the schools. That was an expense. The service board also came out and completely disinfected the schools. That was an expense. The school meals that we are serving, remember right now, we're not receiving any additional funds for those meals. Now, what has happened is that during the summer months, the school food nutrition program has a program that reimburses school systems that have a high percentage of their students who qualify for free and reduced lunches they reimburse students at the free and reduced lunch price meal, which is the highest reimbursement you can get on a school meal. So eventually these meals that we're serving kids, eventually the school system will receive reimbursement for those meals. 
but at the initial cost of the meals, the initial cost of paying the cafeteria workers and the initial cost of paying our bus drivers, all of that is an upfront expense to be reimbursed at a later time through those funds. So we will use some of this money to help offset those expenses that we're realizing right now. The other expense that's the unknown is you know that we have issued Chromebooks and iPads to students, to lots and lots of students. Probably, I would guess, somewhere between six and 700 devices system-wide. And we continue, as the need arises, to continue to disperse the devices at parent and student request. So we have already had some of those devices to come back damaged. So we know that there will be expenses related to those devices that are being sent home. Hopefully it will be a minimal expense, but there will be expenses. Um, so we know that that's an issue. The one thing we can ask is that parents are so, so careful um, with their children and they make sure that the children are taking care of their devices and realize that those devices are going to be used for many years by many students. So we need to take very good care of those devices. Um, so right now, those are the things that we're being told we can use that $292,000 for. But as that money continues to be approved by US Ed, then they will send us additional guidance to let us know how that money can be spent. Questions about that? For the ones that need the supplemental learning for the, the kids that need it, is there anything in place to try to, to you know, provide that service for those students? Well, right now, um, you know, if they were in school, what we would be doing, the kids would be going to their regular classes. And in addition to that, they would be on iReady for reading and math. So right now they're getting the online learning with their teacher and they're also getting the supplemental iReady reading and math online. However, it's, we all know that it, there's nothing online that's ever going to replace that one-on-one -on -one time with the classroom teacher. Right. And so what's gonna happen um, when we come back to school hopefully on time, on July 31st, then we will have to have a plan in place to make sure that our at-risk population, that the students are able to close those gaps. Because what happened is we discussed this a lot, especially with the principals. We felt like we were making great gains. And then, you know, in March, it's not that instruction stopped, but that daily eight hour instruction stop. And so it's just not the same as having that one-on-one -on -one instruction. So we will continue with the um, iReady reading and math for the, in the fall when we return with students. And then it will be their tier one instruction with their classroom teachers. Other questions? And as I know more about the stimulus funds, I will definitely share those. But um, we are very thankful for that. Um, we were told, and when you look at the list, and um, they send us a list that shows what every school system in the state receives. And we're told that that was calculated the same way that they calculate our Title I allocation. And so it's based on your free and reduced lunch population. And so um, we, we did receive um, a lot of funds, you know, as, as small as we are. And so we are thankful for that, but it's because we have a higher at-risk population. Okay. All right, next item, um, item H, I've posted the minutes from the board meeting that you can take a look at and see if any changes need to be made for that. 
um, consent agenda, of course, under superintendent's report for Monday. The schools, as they have been able to, um, have come in, the bookkeepers have come in and they have worked on their financial. So you can look at the financial school reports. Um, the athletic report for the high school is not listed yet. Um, I did talk with Mr. Smith about that, and he, Stacy, has been coming in every day, Stacy Ellington, and I believe Mr. Smith was going to have Stacy go ahead and close out the books for the athletic account, because since there are no spring sports, there's no additional expenditures for this school year. Under the ELOS report, um, you'll see on March the 1st, we brought forward a balance of $2,299,727.09. We had a deposit on March 30th of $126,451.51. We had a small uh, amount of interest on March 31st of 2,292,77.00. Mm -hmm. For an, for an ending balance at the end of March of two million four hundred twenty-eight thousand four seventy-one thirty-seven. So right now um, we're probably about a half a million dollars up in ELOS compared to a year ago. Um, Whitney and I, some good news. Um, Whitney and I have looked at that because. A concern that we have is obviously if people are not spending, not only is it going to affect the state funds that we receive through QBE, but if people are not spending, then it's going to affect the bottom line on ELOS funds. Mm -hmm. And so a concern is if, you, if the ELOS balance is not enough to make our outstanding bond debt, then that money, those by law, those payments have to be made. And so what would happen is you would have, if you don't have the money in ELOS, then you have to use your state and local funds. And you just saw that 90% of your state and local funds go to pay salaries. And so if you're having to use your state and local funds to pay your outstanding bond debt, then you don't have the money to pay your salaries. And so we have looked at what we are going to owe as far as outstanding um, bond debt and other things that will come from ELOS, for example, our bus lease, our ABM lease, all of those things have to come from ELOS, the way we budget our funds. And so we are going to be in a good position, at least for FY21, to be able to make those payments. Because remember, yeah. we make a big principal payment in August of every year, and then we have a principal payment, I'm sorry, not a principal payment, but an interest payment every February. The ABM payment is due every January, and then we make our bus lease payment in the spring summer time of every year. So that that is a comforting thought. Um, if that balance was not where it needed to be, that would be reason for concern because those payments have to come from somewhere. Dr. Talbot. Yes, ma'am. Um, that 2,428,000, et cetera. Yes, uh, don't we have, do we have to use that this summer to pay the bond issue? Yes, ma'am. We will use that amount to make that payment. It's due August 1st, but we have to make it in July, at the end of July. Mm -hmm. And so that will come from there. If we were in a situation where we had not saved our ELOS funds, but yes. we still had to make our outstanding bond payments, then yes. the only other option you would have as an income to pay that is to increase your bond millage. And so there's not a cap on bond millage and currently yeah. ours is at three. And so um, three meals. And so that could go as high as we needed it to go to cover those bond payments. But fortunately, because we've been conservative with our ELOS funds, then we'll be able to maintain that bond millage rate and we won't have to increase that hopefully. That's the goal. That's good. Yeah. Um, 
Any questions about the ELOS funds? No. Okay. No, uh, no. Monday night, <laughs> uh, unless something changes, we, we may not have to go into executive session, but I do have it on the agenda in case we do. And then we have our personnel, of course, Monday night that we will approve recommendations for hire, our retirements, and our resignations. And that's Monday night's agenda. Any questions about Monday night? No, ma'am. Okay. And we'll go back to the work session. And we do need to go into executive session. Now, what will happen at this point is we will stop the live YouTube stream um, for us to go into executive session. And we won't vote on any of the personnel items. That's the reason we need to go into executive session tonight. But we won't vote on anything until Monday night. And so the only thing that's left for the meeting tonight is executive session. And then when we come out of executive session, then we'll have a motion and a second to adjourn. So we will go ahead and end the live streaming on YouTube right now and go into executive session when you make a motion to enter executive session. But before we do that, Dr. Talbert, uh -huh. uh, I know that we had set up a couple of tentative dates to, uh, to try to meet with the city council and uh, hopefully that with all this going on, maybe we can do that in the future. But uh, one thing I know that you and I had talked about is some the bus maintenance, and I talked to the mayor about it. Is there any way that we could possibly send the past year or two's invoices that we've received on bus maintenance to the city manager and see if it would be possible for the city to do the maintenance on our maintenance and repairs on our buses, and to see if that would make instead of having with that facility being right there at the school and possibly being able to maintain our buses in a timely fashion. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it would be able to save us any money, uh -huh. uh, but if it is an option, we'll see if it would be worth it. How many mechanics they got? They have two. How many, how much equipment they maintain beside the police car? I don't, I mean, that's I, I don't know. I'm just throwing that. I'm just throwing that option out there. I mean, I was just saying that? because I want to see what the workload was, right? Because if you got if you got city city trucks, utility trucks, the fire trucks, the police cars, right? I mean, I mean there's a they. I mean, they have a, a, a quite a bit to maintain. Yeah, I know that just from the fire department standpoint. Yeah. So, so they form a loss and, there it, may, and it may not it, it may not be they may not be able to yeah you know i just think it it would be at least worth you know looking at have, have they said that they can give us a quote on 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 maintenance i as far as the money side of it i i don't know i don't know i have not discussed any of that Okay. Uh, that's i was just hoping that maybe we could get dr talbert and, and uh the city manager to to have some